Everything's much better than a divorce. Welcome back. We are live on Channel 5, also live on My5, and Emily and Nick still here with me. Now, should we ban door-to-door -door charity collections? 0207 862 is the number to give us a ring. Regulators are toughening up guidelines for charities after an investigation found some collectors were pressuring people into making donations. Charities must now make sure subcontracting firms are carrying out fundraising on their behalf, are monitored closely and fundraisers receive appropriate training. But what do you think? Should door-to-door -door collectors just be banned altogether? Are you fed up with them knocking at your door for cash? Do you find them maybe a little intimidating? Nick, what do you think when you get a knock on the door? Do you hide? <laughs> I don't open the gates. <laughs> That's one way I love the, I love the fact you have gates. I love the fact you have gates. So, Us mere mortals have doors. <laughs> sorry. Okay, so don't, don't so, open the gates. So I, I would... I, don't I'm, let them I, up the drive. I'm a firm believer in charity mm -hmm. and giving, that we're inundated now with scams, with we're, we're moving towards a cash-free society. So whilst I'm very happy for people to come and promote their charity, I would completely outlaw any cash exchange that, and, and that would avoid one, money being scammed and two, people being subject to pressure. So I hear what you say, thank you, yes, let me think about it and then I'll go online and if I decide I want to contribute, I'll do it online so I know that I'm not being pressurised and it's going to a charity and not in your pocket. Well, it would still partly go in the person's pocket because the person would have to get paid for doing that job, wouldn't, wouldn't they? Well, so I don't know. I think a lot of volunteers, aren't they? Mm, I don't think well, 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 okay. Well, well, well okay, but that, that's fine. So, but, but they'll, they'll get paid, and if they deserve to be paid, that's fine. They're doing a, a very worthwhile job. But what, what I'm concerned about... But you don't want to be pressurised at that time, and they are using pressurised tactics. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we don't know. When people come round, they might have a badge. That There's some very good fake badges around. There are very convincing people who say we're authentic, this is who we represent, and they don't. And yeah, you they part do show your... you the badge. I wonder who has the confidence to actually yeah, no, take it and check absolutely. it. Sometimes the writing's so tiny, you just yeah. go, yeah, 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 that's fine. Oh, I do. Yeah, oh, I, Storm, I am that person. I am that person when check. they come to my front door yeah. um, and, I, and I open the door. Um, yeah, how do you know they're not, asking the, they're not asking for cash, Nick? You don't let them up the driveway. They're like, no, not today. Oh, no. <laughs> who is it, please? Yeah, um, it's Emily Andrews. Absolutely not. Didn't pass the intercom. Contest. Um, no, so um, I don't ha really have a problem with door-to-door -door, uh, charity um, collectors. I think that, yes, I always look at their um, credentials and anyone who comes to my door. In fact, one time someone did come to my door, not a charity, actually. I think it was like a gas. And I really was like, y you are not who you say you are. And then I also took a picture of his yeah. um, card and also went up and down the street with my neighbours and said, don't let this person in. And he yeah. kind of ran off. I mean, I don't know what he was doing. I didn't report it to the police, but it is really important that you, you have the confidence I think to check I what I would like to see actually is what happens with these fundraisers is that charities actually subcontract it to another firm who then in turn might subcontract it to someone else mm. and therein I think lies the problem I think if you are a big charity the RSPCA Great Ormond Street mm. Macmillan Nurses you want to have confidence in the people who are fundraising on your behalf and, and look charity fundraising is really important I'd like to see the charities bring it in-house actually and not subcontract well, that, well, it's to those companies. It's interesting and that's the beauty, isn't that it, you see doing that? it, doing it in the way I'm suggesting, because you're not exchanging cash at, at the point mm. of entry. You, you, they're you're not hearing... asking for cash that, Nick, you don't know because you don't allow them up your drive, but they're <laughs> not asking for cash. They're asking to sign, they're trying to sign you up, yeah. basically. They're trying okay. to sign you up for direct debits. That's what they're asking for. Okay. And actually, that is quite an effective way, I think, of fundraising, because then if you're contributing £10 out of your bank account you every month, it and you can cancel it. You can well. cancel it. Yeah. Also, you do the gift aid, which is really important. That gives yeah. the charities an extra 25% from HMRC. If you're self-employed and you donate to charity, you can also offset it against your tax. Yeah. But hold on, you're but giving that, all that... of that detail to someone that just rocks up at your door asking you to sign up. Well, I think also you don't have to. You can. I. I mean, if I'm not doing the kids' tea storm, if I'm doing the kids' tea, no way. Don't even go to the front door. It's like, oh my goodness, chaos in the kitchen. Um, you can have a nice chat with a lovely, often young man, lovely young man on the doorstep, and he and he or she, obviously, um, can tell you all about the charity. And then I just say, thanks so much. I'm going to have a think about it. But I think that's the thing, isn't it? You know, this. I think it has to be welcome these new guidelines because you don't want people to be pressured into signing up. Well, it sounds like you get quite nice people 
to your door yeah. because actually a the Times released undercover footage last month showing how one marketing firm was training fundraisers to manipulate emotions while door to door selling. Yeah. Take a look. I, I control my, my brain towards my emotions. I am not stick time. But I can look at you here and I can make my, I'm crying. I'm sure you understand. You can see my face? I'm, I'm very into the problem, right? But I can switch. But the good news is, miss, what we're trying to do is we are performing. Look, I'm moving on. Because I care. He ends that so, sentence by saying, I care. And when, yeah. you, when you care, People do everything for you. Yeah, so what I mean, you're saying is he's a convincing salesman and, it, and it, it reinforces the point that you, to avoid being pressurised, come and tell us what you want and no signing up, no cash exchange at that time, give me time. So there's a cooling off period, if you like. Mm. And, and, then, and then you're reacting informed and reflected and you're not being pressurised. So you're just being given a website you can go to yeah. for more information yeah. and if you'd and, like and to also, sign up. Yeah. And maybe. Amanda from East Sussex, do you have a problem with door-to-door -door collectors? Hello, good afternoon, Storm and the panel. Yes, I do. What about um, I, Well, I just literally half an hour ago, my front door went <laughs> and I went and there were two Jehovah's Witnesses at the door. Amanda, did you open, did you allow them up your driveway or did they come to the door? <laughs> <laughs> I opened the door to them. Came to the door. And they started talking to me. Uh -huh. And I said to them, um, I don't really think uh, you're welcome here because we're both lesbians and you don't like us. Oh, wow. And what did they so say? They, well, they, uh, their mouths went wide open like fishes and they ran up the driveway. So oh. job done. Oh, well done. Well, that's well, one way of, of getting rid of someone. I mean, that's not necessarily charity collectors, though. That's slightly different. Do you get many charity collectors where you are? We tend to get people that aren't wearing lanyards, so um, I tend to just say no, thank you, because what we do is, um, as you said before, is is we donate every month through our bank accounts mm -hmm. to charities. Mm -hmm. So I really don't think anyone should come to anyone's door that's uninvited because um, it's dangerous I mean, and there's vulnerable people everywhere. It is quite confronting, isn't it? The fact that it's your yeah. doorway and, and, and perhaps people will feel that if they say no, that person's now going to know where they live and, you know, they're the ungenerous yeah. one and, and, and that maybe feels a bit uncomfortable for some people in their local communities. Uh, but So you would rather n nobody came to your front door, just, you know, people with packages and mail? I don't like anyone coming to the front door and I also don't support chuggers in the street that yeah, stop well, you that's, that's and, another... and, and want your money. It's, it's too aggressive. So... Um, you, make, you make your decision yourself what charities you want to give to yeah. um, and that should be that. It's a personal uh, decision. Amanda, thank you very much for your call. At Lee from Somerset, do you get many of these door-to-door -door charity collectors where you are? Uh, no, I don't get too many, but, um, oh, hello, by the way, I don't get too many, but I, I've worked for a long time in mental health mm -hmm. and I've supported a community mental health and I've supported a lot of people who are quite vulnerable and mm -hmm. arguably don't have the capacity to, to fend these people off at the door and, um, have ended up actually in debt, occurring quite a lot of debt through signing up to quite a few charities. Yeah. So, um, you know, and, and we've had to work with them to unsign them up to the charity. So I don't, you know, these, these people who come to the doors haven't, haven't got capacity in mind when they come selling these. I'm all for charity, but, you know, I, I, I just don't think they've, they understand capacity and understand vulnerability when they go door to door. What about Nick's suggestion that they come to your door to tell you about the charity, but they're not allowed to take any cash from you, they're not getting you to sign up, they, all they do is give you a, a website and then you can take that away and decide whether you want to sign up or not? I think I think that's better. Yeah, I think that's better. I still I still think you've got to be wary of people who then might jump straight on and sign up to things on the website. But I think I think not pressuring at the door is probably a better way to go. Yeah. It does feel like there'd be a bit more distance there. Yeah. But you're right. If somebody's vulnerable and they feel like they have to do something, it I, may I, not help. I actually think this. I actually think this, the chugging and the door to door sort of trying to pressurise people to sign up to charity. I think it's had its day. I actually think it's quite old fashioned now. Really? And I think actually I think people probably are quite. I, I wonder whether not that the charities would ever kind of you know release the information. But I suspect the sign up rates. Are 
probably going down because people, I mean, I suspect most people calling up will be saying it's, it's we don't like it, we don't like chuggers, we don't like the hassle, mm. we don't like the pressure. So actually, I think charities need to find a better way to market themselves. Hey. They but do need money. I think maybe, I think maybe the key is to try and make it more personalised. We live in a, I mean, talking out the top of my head now. I mean, I, I don't know, maybe it'd be insensitive, but for instance, if you have, if you've been, um, if you've been suffering from a particular illness, then maybe signs up in a doctor's surgery or a hospital saying, if you could do feel you could support to help others, maybe come and donate here or sign up mm -hmm. or, you know, that kind of thing, rather than, you know, this kind of very aggressive. You'd also do it on social media as well. Yeah. Yeah. But you see, if we outlaw it, it and, and you're talking about the charities, I, I'm also talking about not only vulnerable people, but people who are just scamming it. They're not, they're not from yeah. any territory. They're not yeah. from any charity. Yeah. They're just basically nicking your money. Didn't even think about them. And, th and there are an awful lot of those about. Yeah, Lee, thank you very much for bringing that to our attention as well. Some people are very vulnerable and end up signing up to far too much. Uh, Katrina from West Yorkshire, have you signed up to one of these, uh, with one of these door-to-door -door collectors? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't. And But we a few years ago, we did have a, pers uh, a set of, young people coming round mm -hmm. and it turned out they were all scamming us. Um, I didn't pay, but some of my neighbours did give mm -hmm. to them. Um, and so I've never, I've never given over the door anyway. No. And so what do you say to people when they come round then? You just say, no, no, thank you. Or no, can you thank give... you. And I also now have a, 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 a uh, a camera in my house so that I can see who's come to the door. So. Uh, you're doing a nick there. They're not passing the intercom test. You're speaking to them while that door is closed. No, I mean, we laugh, but actually, if you're a vulnerable person, yeah. that's a very sensible yeah, way of absolutely. dealing with that situation. There are doorbells that yeah. you can get now, yeah. video doorbells, very, door. very cheap. You who's can there? look at who want? it is. Exactly. And often, you know, people are, if they're proper charity collectors, they'll be in jackets, branded jackets, but, branded lanyards. But, so you you know, can, but really Nick, who trusts people, nobody, the, the, says the, the, that you can, and you can gates, get some gates, get some gates like this. Really vulnerable people will still fall foul, won't they? Unfortunately, they'll still they'll still succumb to fraudsters. Uh, Katrina, thank you very much for your call. Kirsty from South Yorkshire, do we need to ban door to door charity collectors? Yeah, I had an incident last week where I basically had a man knock on my door, and he claimed from the from the air ambulance they needed to raise a million pounds for a new helipad. He had no lanyard, he didn't introduce, introduce his name. I don't normally answer the door. I specified that I have a sticker from the police. You know, if you don't have an appointment, please don't knock. There's vulnerable people down here. You shouldn't be knocking. I, he had laminated pouches. I asked for a leaflet. He told me I haven't got one. He went straight to money, saying that he needs direct debit details. When can he come back? My neighbour came out. Uh, can you give your bank details? So I phoned the police. And they came within half an hour, um, and unfortunately, we've already got a helipad. But I think he was a foster, so I, I suffer with mental health. I'm going through trauma therapy. Okay. I have an issue with men because I've had domestic abuse. I'm going through trauma therapy. Um, I'm quite a vulnerable lady, you know, as a 48 year old lady. But I found it very intimidating that he was there within less than a minute at my door. And I don't think it's right because there could have been a vulnerable lady or an elderly man that he could have knocked on and they would have just like passed him £20 and the police are going to like look into it. I found I mean, the charity shop up. Kirsty, it sounds like the people that live in your house, you included, are vulnerable. So they were coming to a vulnerable person's house and, and using pressure tactics as well to go straight to money and I don't have a leaflet and basically he wasn't going to leave you to think about it. I think they are sheer warning signs. If someone comes to your door and it ha it's urgent, you have to give them money now and they won't give you time to think about it. It's it's It might be worth just taking a step back and, and really considering whether this is somebody that you, that you can trust. So it sounds like you did the exact right thing do you know if there was any um repercussions for this individual or what what happened with the police within half an hour the police came because they have a doorbell next door one of those doorbells with a camera mm -hmm. and they asked me which direction he went in he was knocking on everybody's door but we've only just got a helipad it was like like straight to money quite intimidating quite well when can i come back when can i come back yeah so it sounds like he was a forcer because I phoned up a charity shop for the air ambulance for the Northern General Hospital in Sheffield mm. and they basically said, well, you know, we don't do that. We don't send people knocking door to door. Yeah. 
And so, Kirsty, I mean, we can't verify what's going on there or whether this person was or not. It doesn't sound like it was It was very above board, that situation, whatever was going on there. Kirsty, and it sounds like you did a, a great thing um, just to call the police and let them know what was going on. You would have had, your, your spidey senses would have been tingling no, instantly she, then, wouldn't it? She did exactly the right thing. Yeah. Uh, without question, he was a fraudster. Without question, he was trying to make a quick buck um, and you did the right thing. Ideally, you don't really want to open the door to people like that. And a small investment in some sort of bell at the door with a, a little camera on mm. so you can speak to him and say, no, thank you, goodbye. And then you don't need to put yourself through the ordeal of having to communicate with people like that. Uh, thank you for your call. Thanks for all your calls on this. We're going to have to move on now. After the break, is it ever OK to give chocolate to kids for their breakfast? Actually, as their breakfast. 0207 862 is the number. Maybe you do it as a treat. We'll speak to you after this. <coughs>